Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guitar of the Day. I'm your host, Michael Lemo, and it's another Thumpin' Thursday. Whoop, whoop! This is my boy, Greg Coates. Yes! Hell <laughs> yeah. So we got a really cool one. I don't know, Greg, have you played one of these yet on our Guitar of the Days? Uh, this is the first Rick I, I've put, laid my hands upon, but this is probably my favorite Rick type. It is the coolest. It's a 1973 4001. Really cool. In fire glow. So cool. It has the like perloid uh, kind crushed of pearl. crushed pearl uh, inlays that go all the way across the fingerboard, and of course this really bitchin' uh, you know checkerboard binding. I love it's the so checkerboard cool. binding. In this era. So cool. Yeah. Let's check out the back too. Ooh. This one's been played a little bit, but it's in good shape. The machines have been um, changed out from the original Grover like Smalls. box tuners to the, the Schaller. Uh, I'm sure much higher gear ratio, better tuners actually in the long run, but uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a good thing to replace on these when they when they go. <laughs> I think that's one of the coolest headstocks it actually. Is. I've never really taken it in, yeah. stared at that headstock. Look at it. what shape is that? <laughs> it's almost like a mirror, kind of a mirror of the body in a way. It uh, is, yeah, that's a way. great point, yeah. yeah. And uh, Rickenbacker is just such an insane brand coming out of California, but it's just, it's just like all their designs are unique and and uh, obviously on the guitar side, they have great 12 strings as well. But this guitar, or bass, I should say, is absolutely cool. And a lot of great players. We had Rick James Rick play James. Rickenbackers and then to the Rockers you got. The first guy, well, early on, John Twistle played them. Uh, you know, obviously Paul McCartney did later on in his mm -hmm. career with the Beatles post Hoffner. But, uh, I mean, the, the guy that most people associate with these is Chris Squire from Yes. That's the first person I think of. And er, an early rush to Getty Lee played these quite a yep. bit too. Um, but yeah, they, they Lemmy have, played one? Lemmy, Lemmy's, yeah, he had custom made ones with like four pickups and leather pick guards and crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. And ran through his wall of marshals. And <laughs> they definitely have a, a di dis very distinct sound. I don't know, I only I think of, know of one person who ever used the Ricca sound thing because then you have to bring two amps to a gig. You know, but uh, I know. Who's that? Uh, um, I just, uh, oh, somebody customer, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, no one famous that I know. Just, had, somebody yeah. turned it up. Yeah, but, but yeah. it is a really, really cool instrument and so much vibe. and. I think even like a lot of newer bands, I think I saw, I know uh, the singer who plays guitar uses Rickenbackers, but bands like Tim and Paula utilize these Rickenbacker basses um, and different bands that I've seen, because uh, they get kind of like a, a very distinct sound, definitely different than a Fender and obviously from a Gibson, so really cool. Yeah, they're they're a very nimble, like very guitarish playing yeah, kind of bass. It's exactly, kind of, yeah. Everything about it's kind of like light and lightly built and kind of, kind of delicate in a way, but it yeah. has a really, uh, really, very signature sound like their guitars do as well. Cool. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm excited to see Greg play this one. This Let's go. Cool. Let's do it. I'll see if I can remember anything to play on this. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like me. It really <laughs> <See does>. <laughs> Hey, it's Greg Coates out front here at Norm's Rare Guitars with a 1973 Rickenbacker 4001 Fire Glow. This is a really, really cool version of this instrument with the inlays that go all the way across the fingerboard. There's like the big glittery chunks in there, great neck profile, and this awesome checkerboard binding. Anytime I've seen one of these, it's always been a great bass. I love these things. And it's uh, it's got those signature Rickenbacker sounds. Uh, but yeah, the neck profile is fantastic. It's really nice, nice and lightweight. Um, the original machines have been uh, replaced by shallower, uh, higher gear ratio, uh, sealed gear machines. Um, all good here. Uh, it's it's uh, definitely a player. It looks like a player to me. It feels like a player. But uh, we'll, we'll check out the neck pickup first. It gives that really nice, round, deep Rickenbacker kind of tone. smooth it's got that really just deep deep bottom end going on this is both pickups in the middle all the way wide open tone all the way open Piano string sounding, but just this huge round bottom end. And the 
ever aggressive bridge pickup for those Chris Squire tones and uh, Getty, or Getty Lee tones and those uh, uh, Lemmy Motorhead kind of sounds. <laughs> Rickenbacker classic rock tones, aggressive but round, um, you know, from metal to Lemmy and Motorhead to really kind of uh, very classically inspired Yes songs, and I, of course Getty Lee played a lot of a lot of stuff on this too. I, it's been a minute since I played Red Barchetta, but this this kind of thing. Rickenbackers have such a signature sound, and the basses are, are you know, the people who play them were always so, uh, so uh, just illustrated so well with the tones of this 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 type of instrument. This 4001, 1973 Rickenbacker Fireglow, just extra bitchin' bass, <laughs> super <laughs> cool. Yeah, really great, a joy to play. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, you bet. 